So it appears that Kamala Harris and the Democrats, they're in panic mode because Vice President Harris, she's fell into attract black voters. When we go back to 2008, when Obama was elected to office, he was able to win because the black voter turnout was 95%, which was a record high. Now, recent polls, they're showing that Kamala is projected to scoop in about 84% of the black voters. And that's not good. No, that's not good at all. So what's going on uh, in the Democratic camp? Uh, what's going on right now is they're trying to do some damage control. So within this damage control, what they think is the answer and the solution is sending out a former president, Barack Obama, to come and talk to a certain group of, of, of black voters. Now, that group of black voters is black men. Now, the problem is uh, President Barack Obama, opposed to talking to black men, he's actually talking down on black men. And that's something that black men or any man, it's hard for a man to accept there's another male uh, talking down on us. That's not the way to attract the black voters. And someone is, is misguiding the Democrats into believing that that is the, uh, a viable solution. And that's simply not the way that you're going to attract the male voters. Now, when we look at uh, the history of the black voter as it relates to the Democratic Party, I'm talking about the recent history. Uh, this is what the uh, Harris campaign is going off of. They're looking at the track record that in 2008, uh, President Barack Obama, everyone was excited about him. He was the ver very first black candidate that was uh, officially a nominee in, a, uh, uh, in one of the uh, uh, parties uh, here in America, in the Democratic Party in particular. So with him being in that position, us black Americans, we were very excited. Um, you know, me as you know, just just myself, I was very excited. I was excited, you know, to go out to the polls to vote. It was historic. So I was looking at it from a historical standpoint, not much so uh listening to the message. You no, know, the message that he portrayed was hope. So I, I guess I kind of was listening to the message because it kind of gave a sense of hope. Uh, at the time, my son was uh, about, uh, he was about seven, eight years old. Yeah, he was he was seven years old at the time, uh, my oldest son. So I was excited to see, uh, for him to see someone that looked like us to be elected into the White House. So that, that was symbolic to me. Uh, I did not pay much attention to the policies that President Obama was pushing or proposing. And that was the mistake. And many black people, in particular black males, we all share that same sentiment. We went out with excitement. We went out with emotions, which is not good for a man to do, is to act on emotions because you don't get the results that you're, that you're looking for when you're not acting on logics. Because as men, we, we react to logics, not to emotions. So at that point, uh, there was such a high turnout for uh, President Barack Obama. I was one of those uh, individuals I remember that night like it was yesterday. So, uh, you know, when they counted the votes, you know, we were all excited. Everyone was in the streets um, and we all celebrated together. Like we were literally in the streets celebrating together uh, because we had the first black president. Now, once Obama, um, once we started seeing what he was doing in the office, once we saw that we as black people were not receiving anything uh, from this historic election, uh, but just the symbolism, then we started to think. We started to think and we say, hey, you know, this isn't as, as great as we thought it would be. You know, so, yeah, I like I, I still to this day like the fact that uh, my sons can look up and say that they saw a black president. Uh, for the United States of America. That is still powerful to me. Uh, but the damage of a Barack Obama presidency kind of outweighs that in a sense. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is uh, Barack Obama, he was a strong advocate for destroying the nuclear family. He was a very strong advocate for that. Uh, and I think the Democrats use him as a black male to get their, their message across uh, the the further push the LGBTQ community agenda, 
um, to further push rhetoric against the black, uh, against the family in general, the, the nuclear family. So I think that that was a big, big mistake that we made in electing uh, President Obama because we didn't know, we didn't read the fine print. And that's what happened when you vote off of emotions. So black men had learned from that. Uh, I would say myself as a black man, I learned from that. And there are many other black men that learned from that same um, uh, um, uh, situation from electing President Obama. Now, in uh, 2012, the black voter uh, turned out turned out to be a little less for Obama. He lost two points, so he he had a 93 percent uh, voter turnout in 2012. That was the black voter turnout. So that was significant because that means that there was a group of black voters that didn't uh, drink the Kool Aid this second go round that uh, did not vote off of emotions the second go round, that looked at uh, the policies, look at what he was, uh, look at his track record the second go round. So that was very important uh, for black voters. And that was, that's leading us up to where we're at with Kamala Harris. So a lot of times when uh, you have a pattern uh, really with such high numbers, you could take advantage of that group of people. And that's what we've been seeing with black voters as it relates to the Democratic Party. However, the good news is black voters have been waking up. Uh, we've been waking up in droves, especially black male voters. Now, I do give credit to black women voters because there have been quite a significant amount of black women that has been waking up as well. Uh, now, when we go to 2016, 2016, we saw a uh, greater decline uh, from that 95% that Obama received in 2008. Now, this is when Hillary Clinton was running and she was up against uh, former President Donald Trump. Now, in that election, what we see was uh, Hillary Clinton was able to get 91% of the uh, black voters, and then Donald Trump was able to get 6% of the black voters, which was really significant. So now you see a shift where uh, Black male voters, they were going and leaning over to the red side. Uh, you know, uh, Actually, in that election, I voted for Trump as well. So you had a lot of black male voters that uh, lean more to the conservative ticket than they did to the liberal ticket because we saw what was going on in the Democratic Party. And that's the same thing that's going on today. But you have larger numbers of black people, in particular black males, that are leaning toward Donald Trump that's leaning to our conservative party because we, what I, this is, this is on the ground. What I've heard a lot of uh, black males talk about is the family, is the economy, is uh, the security of America, the border. So we have kind of got away, gotten away from the uh, symbolism, you no, know, of wanting something that's symbolic to wanting something that's tangible. Uh, black males want to know. How can they uh, feed their families? Black males want to know about laws uh, as it relates to uh, black men, as it relates to men, father's rights issues, uh, the broken child support system. These are things that men want to know, in particular black men, because we are very affected by these type of issues. So the Harris campaign and the Democrats in general, they have not address these particular issues. And it's showing. Uh, when you look at the Democrats in 2020, this is when uh, Joe Biden uh, had ran against Donald Trump. And Joe Biden only received 87% of the black votes. Keep in mind, just not even a decade ago, uh, pr former President Barack Obama had 95% of the black votes. That's a significant difference. That's a huge difference from 95% to 87%. So now what that tells me is there was an 8% uh, a eight point drop in black voters uh, for the Democratic Party. Donald Trump, he showed double, he, he, he actually doubled his uh, reach to black uh, voters and he was uh, actually receiving 12% of the black votes in 2020. Uh, in 2016, he had 6%. So from 6% to 12%, that's enormous. So he received 12% of the black votes in 2020. That's telling me more black people was waking up, more black people was tired of drinking the Kool-Aid, 
and more black people wanted something that was more tangible and wanted to let the Democrats know, hey, we're still here if you want us, but you got to give us something. You're not just going to get our vote and take us for granted anymore. Uh, we're long past those days. So that's what uh, that message is uh, sending. It's what it's telling me, and that's what the Democrats need to hear. But the Democrats, they're failing to hear the message because they're still not addressing the needs of Black people in general and then Black males in particular. Now, what I mean by that, like I say that um, when I'm talking to Black fathers, Black men, they're talking about father rights issues. As we know, America have a very high divorce rate, extremely high divorce rate. In the Black community, we have a very low marriage rate. So when we do get married and then that divorce comes, that is very troubling to the uh, Black community, in particular to the Black male. Uh, what happens then? The father, he has no rights, uh, as or he has very minimal rights as it pertains to his child. We know that the uh, average divorce case, the mother received custody of the child. The father have to pay child support. He get visitation. A lot of fathers are tired of that particular situation. And those are things that they are looking for their politicians to address. And those are things that the Democrat Party refused to address. Now, they will address women rights issues, women reproductive health, health. You no, know, so they will address those type of situations, but they won't address anything as it relates to men. Men is a special interest group, just as women is. So just as you are concerned with women rights, we are concerned with uh, men's rights. Men rights include uh, things such as our parental rights. That's very important to us, uh, men parental rights. And no one is addressing those. Uh, with the, the, the no-fault divorce, a lot of men, they lose their shirts in these divorces, and men want to hear uh, politicians talk about how would they address uh, those type of issues to protect their assets. Men are really, really concerned with uh, their economics. They're concerned with their assets. That's not to say that uh, if a man and a woman you know they're in a, a, a marriage relationship, uh, they're in that marriage for um, a number of years. That woman was a stay-at-home mom or she contributed to the uh, economic stability of that family. Yeah, a reasonable male, I don't care who, the, who he is, he's going to make sure that that woman uh, has some type of uh, economic stability after that marriage. But the way it's set up now is the man have to give up everything. Uh, you no, know, he give up the house, he give up the car, he give up his bank account. And he's left with nothing. And now he has to pay child support uh, month after month to support the child. Uh, and now he's left with crumbs. So that's a broken, that's something that's broken in the system that some that a politician has to address. And we really know that the Democrats have no interest in addressing those type of things. So a lot of times uh, the males they look toward Republicans. Now I have heard many Republicans talk about father rights issues. They've talked about the no-fault divorce. And these are things that attract the men to uh, the Republican Party, to the conservative uh, side. They're talking about the economy. They're talking about small businesses. Now, Kamala Harris, she's trying her best to talk about the economy, but we saw her track record over the last three and a half years uh, under her and Joe Biden. And we saw that we did not have a strong economy we saw that uh, they did not put uh, vest a lot of interest in small businesses, and we saw they did not uh, address anything as it relates to males. So this is why the Democrat Party, they're losing as it relates to the male voter. They're losing the black male voter in particular. Now, in something that they're trying to hide, they're actually losing a lot of black female voters. I'm on the ground. I'm talking to uh, the human beings all the time. I'm talking to female voters, to male voters uh, that are black. And a lot of them are turning, they're turning away from the Democratic Party in numbers that we just can't believe. Like now in this election, what they're projecting is Harris is uh, on slate to get 84 percent of the black vote, which is actually lower than what Biden received uh, in 2020 at that 87 percent. And Trump is on slate to get 13% of the black vote, um, which, is a which is still an increase from what he got in 2020. So these are the numbers that the Democrats are looking at. This is what 
is scaring them. This is what uh, why they have President Obama out on the trail uh, trying to humiliate black men into voting for him. But one of, I'm going to tell you what stuck out to me when I heard uh, President Obama speak. President Obama said that he did not grow up with his father. He did not grow up with a father. Then he said he later grew up with a stepfather and he grew up with his mother. So he have a lot of influence of the mother. So that's going to give him a lot of feminine energy. Now, what happens when you grow up with that, with your father, your biological father, the man who created you and made you, then he's going to be able to give you lessons um, that only a man could give you. He's going to be able to teach you how to be uh, more logical, teach you how to be solid, uh, as, as we like to say, um, to be very solid, to do what you say, to stand on principles. What we see with uh, the Democrats, like uh, President Barack Obama, like uh, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, they really don't have any principles to stand on. They kind of get shifted any way that the wind blow. Uh, that is more so, uh, that's not a, 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 a tendency that men like to see, especially in other men. We don't like to see it in women, but especially in other men. So when you push a, a Barack Obama on us to try to uh, chastise us, it kind of turns us off because we see that he shifts any way that the wind blows, well, which, I, which, as I say, is a, a more of a feminine trait. So that's not the right approach. What Barack Obama need to do, he need to come to black men and say, hey, listen, I understand that you have uh, needs. I understand that there's issues that you want. So what we're going to do as a Democratic Party is we're going to directly address your needs. We know that this issue is important to you. We know that that issue is important to you. If we're able to address these things, if we're able to give you these things, can we earn your vote? That's the approach that Barack Obama need to take because as men and, and Kamala Harris need to take that same approach as well. As men, we, uh, we shoot straight from the hip. That's the reason why a lot of people don't like Donald Trump. Donald Trump, he shoots straight from the hip. He say things that uh, you might not like. Even in my household, sometimes with my, um, uh, I have two minor children at home, uh, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. And sometimes I'm just straight from the hip with them. If they do something, I say, I'm very strong uh, with them. I'm very direct with them. And their mom, she brings in that softness. And she say, well, just forgive them. They made a mistake. And I understand it. So now we have that balance in our household. And that's what every household need is that balance. Barack Obama didn't receive that balance. Uh, his mom was more uh, coddling to him if he made a mistake. She didn't give him that firm um, discipline that he would need. She just kind of babied him. You know, my wife, she babies our boys, which is good because that's, they're going to, uh, they need that comfort and they need that, uh, that, 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 that emotional sense from their mother. But for me, I'm more strong with them. I give them strength, you know, so both of us deposit into our sons, um, know that uh, I deposit that masculine energy that they need. They need that masculinity. They need that logics. They need that strength so they can know which way to move forward. They know uh, that when they say something, they got to stand on their word. If they tell me that, they, that they're going to do something, they don't, they don't follow through, I tell them, Here, look, son, there's a consequence to what you did. You have to hold that consequence because anything we do in life, there comes a consequence. Now, their mother, on the other hand, she could say, well, you made a mistake. You didn't do it. I'm going to forgive you this time, which is okay because they need that balance. So they're going to know in life that they have to hold still to their um, to the word. They got to be responsible. And then they're going to know also how to be forgiven, how to be loving and caring because they're getting that from their mom and they're getting that from their dad. So that's what uh, uh, that male influence does. And that's what Barack Obama, you know, sadly that he missed growing up. He didn't get that uh, growing up. Uh, Kamala Harris didn't get that growing up. No, she grew up in a single mother household as well. So therefore, she don't have that uh, that 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 logical way of thinking or that that strength that a man could g even give his daughter, so his daughter could know that you have to stand on some type of principles. Uh, Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, they stand on no kind of principles. They sway any way that the wind blow. So it, whether it's um, uh, when we're talking about policies, 
if it's uh, uh, the economy, uh, if this group say, oh, we should do this, then they're going to lean that way. Then this other group come the next day and say, we should do that. As long as it sounds good, they're going to lean that way. Uh, whether it's the uh, 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 social issues like the LGBTQ, no matter how much it damages the community, no matter how much it damages the, the nuclear family, it sounds good and it feels good to them. So they're going to lean that way because it feels good. And when you uh, when you don't grow up with that male energy, when you don't grow up with that that father in the household, you only do what feels good. Those things that are a bit uncomfortable, those are the things that the father pushes you through, pushes through you and teach you how to deal with those things. And those are the things that Kamala Harris and Barack Obama, they sway away from. They don't want to do those things that are uncomfortable uh, or make others feel uncomfortable. And that's the things they don't like about Trump is because they say Trump rhetoric make people feel uncomfortable. Now, there's times in life you're going to have to feel uncomfortable. It's per perfectly fine. There's many times in life uh, that I feel uncomfortable even now as a husband and as a father, but it's my responsibility to be able to take those things and to make sure that my family don't feel uncomfortable. I take those uncomfortable situations and I bear those. And I, I figure out a way to navigate my family for, uh, forward without letting my wife and my kids become harmed by these dangers that's making me feel uncomfortable or that could, or that can make them feel uncomfortable. So they don't I, I protect them so that they don't feel uncomfortable because it's part of my duties. Uh, and that's what us men, when we're looking at voting, we're looking at things of a real of reality. So even if it makes us feel uncomfortable, even if we don't like the rhetoric, um, let's say Trump, I don't like everything Trump says, but I don't care about what he says. I care about what he does. I care about the uh, things that he do. I care about what I saw with him uh, strengthening the economy uh, when he was president. I care about what I saw him do at the border. Um, now, the way he talk about people, uh, even you know, my wife is from East Africa. My six-year-old son is from East Africa. Uh, he called African countries shithole countries. That don't make a difference to me. That I, I, I could care less because I've been to eight African countries, and each one of them had great value. Uh, I, my, my wife and I, we have residents in uh, uh, East Africa, and trust me, the way I'm treated there, the our lifestyle there is immaculate. It's, it's spectacular. So for him to say that African uh, countries are shithole countries, that don't bother me. Because I actually have uh, invest, I have vested interest in Africa. My wife is uh, is African. My six year old son was born in Africa. Now that brings me to immigration. Kamala Harris, she has vested interest in immigrants. I have vested interest in immigrants. My wife is a uh, is an immigrant. But the thing is, the when Kamala Harris look in the mirror, she looks at uh, an immigrant mother and an immigrant father. So therefore, she want to be very loose on the border. She's not going to be concerned with the security of America in that sense because she's going to do everything in her power to make sure that her mother and her father is able to come to America, is able to get citizenship no matter what the cost, even if it's uh, uh, by doing it the wrong way, even if it's by doing it the illegal way. Now, me, on the other hand, just like Donald Trump, Donald Trump's uh, wife is an immigrant, but we made sure that our spouses came to the United States of America the proper way. I filled out the uh, DS-160, uh, um, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, um, the DS-160 is uh, passport. Uh, I fill out the, uh, um, geez, I forget the form, but it's with USCIS. Uh, so I fill out the proper forms with USCIS for my wife uh, to get her uh, spousal visa, her uh, green card. She received that. After receiving that, the same thing I did with my uh, six-year-old son, I filed for him a birth abroad certificate. And once the two of them received their legal certifications, that at that point, I flew them to the United States of America. After three years, my wife gained her U.S. citizenship. My son, his citizenship came through birth. It came through my citizenship. So we did it the right way. We did it, we did it the legal way. And that's the only thing that 
the average American is saying about immigration. Uh, that's the only thing that uh, those that lean conservative is saying about immigration. It's not that we don't want uh, uh, immigrants into the United States. I wanted an immigrant into the United States, which is my wife. And I filed for her the proper way. So uh, Donald Trump, his wife is an immigrant. He filed for her the proper way. And that's the only thing. Now, when you're crossing the border illegally, you're not getting vetted. You're not getting checked. We don't know who's crossing. We just saw the uh, recent uh, reports saying that uh, uh, 400 plus thousand uh, have criminal records. That's a problem. And those are things that the Democrats are not looking at. Those are things that men are looking at. Black men, we're looking at those issues. And those uh, things that are uh, very concerning and very alarming for us. And that's what the Democrats have to address. If, if you all want the black vote, the black male vote, you have to address issues that are concerning to black men. We're concerned with protecting our community. And when you're letting all the immigrants in, they're destroying, they're further destroying the black communities. Uh, when you're when you're when you're when you're pushing agendas on our small children, that destroys the black family, it destroys the black community. And we we've been shamed to where we're not able to talk about these things. We're they're trying to shame us into calling a man a woman. And if you don't say that this man is a woman, you're they're trying to make you feel bad, make you feel like you're a bad human being because you do not want to lie. This is horrible. This is what the Democrats is doing. These are reasons why black men are turning from the Democrat Party. We don't want to have to uh, walk down the streets and lie and say that this woman is a man, this man is a woman. That's it's just ridiculous. That's the reason why the black voter turnout is changing for the Democrat Party. And if they do not address these issues, they are not going to gain the black male vote. They're not going to, they're going to lose more of the black woman vote as well. Now, if you gain any uh, value from this video, please like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Uh, these messages has to get out uh, to the masses. We have to speak truth to power. Uh, we have to let people know what it is that, that affect us, what it is that we need especially as a voter block, as black voters, uh, we can't be shamed uh, any further where people say, oh, you're, you're voting for Donald Trump, you're a sellout, you this, you that, you're coon, you're Uncle Tom. We can't let people shame us any further. We have to speak truth to power. We got to stand strong on our values, stand strong on our belief, and we won't be shamed into voting for anyone based on race, color, or party. And this is the message that we have to push out to, uh, especially before the November elections, because we will be doomed if we have a Kamala Harris, Tim Walls White House. We, America will be doomed. And, uh, and trust me, this country is going to go through things that we've never seen before, if that is the turnout of the uh, upcoming election. And you don't want to wait until that happens. You want to prevent that from happening. We need Donald Trump in the White House more now than ever before. So if you gained any value from this video, then I'm going to suggest that you watch the video that's uh, here, uh, right here, or right, right there. Uh, definitely click on that video. It's going to give you a, a bit more insight to what's going on with the elections. And I think that you definitely will gain more value from it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, until next time, thanks.